The good thing about the Conduit AEP is that it replaces the whole world. Well, the internet. Well, a complete IoT ecostructure. The basic block diagram of an IoT chain begins with an end device that typically connects by radio to a gateway. The gateway transparently relays all the packets it receives to a network server that routes details to an application server. These packets may then be forwarded to another device, a database, fixed or mobile app, depending on the function required. Packets may also return backwards through the same route. All transmissions are encrypted, and to help support the network servers are other functions, including join servers that control the initial connection and generate security keys. The AEP version of the conduit houses all of these functions in a single unit. This allows it to operate as part of the wider IoT world, or just as a single complete standalone entity. In addition, it contains a Node-RED server that provides a simple but powerful graphical interface to control and maintain connected devices. It also permits the processing of the data received, as we will see. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the connection of a Class C N device and show examples of some of the functions baked into the Node-RED as provided by the Conduit AEP, the application execution platform. Connect a suitable antenna to the module labeled RF on the rear of the Conduit. Only then screw in the power connector and turn on the power. The Conduit does not have a power switch. Each new AES arrives pre-configured with a fixed IP address of 192.168.2.1. This is not a demonstration of Multitech's nascent global hegemony in IoT, but a pragmatic method of defining a simple initial configurable IP interface. Force a static IP address into a monitor machine and interconnect it into the Ethernet port, again at the rear of the conduit. The end device to be used here is the M dot. This small board also has an SMA connector for a small antenna, which can double as a convenient handle, given its size. The M dot is inserted into an M dot micro development board for the purposes of this demonstration. The USB port on the development board receives all of the power required to supply both boards and also provides the communications interfaces between the M dot and the monitor. A terminal emulator is acquired on the monitor machine to complete the serial port access. And in this instance, TerraTerm, a free program, was downloaded and installed on PCs, whilst Linux and Macs come with suitable software already installed. There are several methods of connecting the monitor to the Conduit AES over the Ethernet connection. These are a browser admin connection, a secure terminal link, and a Node-RED admin page. Let's begin with the initial setup of the browser interface. Enter http colon slash slash 192.168.2.1 into the address bar. The conduit will redirect you to the HTTPS service to use the benefits of the encrypted transfer. This causes browsers to display a certificate alert, which normally will cause you to question the validity of the site. Here, we understand the implication of the security alert, so add the details to the exception list and carry on. Admin and admin are the default responses to the challenge splash screen, and once accepted, this leads to initial setup screen that configures all of the basic access details, date and time, and an opportunity to introduce your conduit to the local IP network settings. If these are modified here, then your monitor machine should also be changed to suit. Should you need to return to this process later, it may be found here in the menu under Admin Initial Setup. Patience is a virtue imposed by the conduit, as now a reboot is required. This can take up to a minute to perform. Once returned, we can continue to the purpose of this video to establish a Class C link between the end device and the node read on the conduit. The title bar here displays the status. Here, we're running firmware version 1.4.3. On the right, on the top, confirmation that we are logged in as admin next to the logout link. This is rarely used as the Conduit admin page will time out automatically after a few minutes. Below is an impressive built-in search function providing direct access to the options shown in the pull-down. Across other pages are these small blue question mark buttons that link to further context-sensitive help. This is very well designed. Click on Setup LoRa. In the top LoRa mode settings, ensure that the network server option is selected in the pull down. It's this option that switches between the plain transparent packet forwarding option and the full fat AEP using all of the built in functions it features. The next block is regionally conditioned and the frequency and methods of operations vary slightly. The globe is covered by differing regional frequency and operating restrictions. In this channel plan, 
select the region option. It may be possible, as here, that these options have already been imposed. There is an additional step that applies to the US and AU options, and this is the inclusion of a frequency subband. This is not shown on this machine, but just set it to option 1 for the moment, if it is visible. All regional options have to complete the next section. Select Name from the Network ID pull-down, and then enter your choice of name. Select Passphrase in the Network Key pull-down here, and enter your choice of Passphrase. Often, units are supplied with defaults already inserted. Scroll down to reveal the Submit button, and press the Save Your Changes. The conduit stores these details in non-volatile memory. The Gateway function and the Network Server are now configured. Whilst we're in this menu, we can jump ahead and select the Apps option and ensure this tick box is present that enables the Node-RED server on boot up. This blue button launches Node-RED, which will appear in the browser. Perhaps a better option is to right-click the link and open the Node-RED in a new tab or window. Note the address. HTTPS, your selected IP address, colon 1880, where 1880 is the default port used for Node-RED access. Select Save and Reset for the moment, and we will move on to configure the end device. For PCs, download and install a package such as TerraTerm, a free emulator. Once opened, the first option is to select the correct COM port, which is the only tedious option, should more than one exist. Here, I have three. The important point is that the board rate of the correct port must be set to 115,200. Otherwise, all defaults shown here can be accepted. The terminal cursor should jump into life when the mouse is clicked in the terminal screen and the enter press repeatedly. We journey back into the 60s by entering AT and the enter key to reveal the OK response. AT stands for attention and hops back to the days of telephone modems pioneered by Hayes. You can repeatedly enter AT to see the OK response. This is the terminal communicating with the modem, setting up the details before opening the communications with the remote machine. Back then, all data would have travelled over standard telephone lines using good old-fashioned analog audio tones. At some point, the AT command to dial the remote machine would be given, and the communications mode would change from that of issuing AT control commands to the local modem to transferring data across to the remote machine. The modem would then have to be transparent in its data mode. There is a parallel here with a telephone in speech mode, with the dial and ringing tones giving way to talking to the other end and communications. With a phone, at the end of the call, you simply replace the receiver. With the modem, you transmit three plus symbols to close the line and revert back from the data mode to the modem control mode. This process is called escaping the communications channel and is behind the meaning of the ESC key on the standard keyboard. This operation is now emulated between the M dot and the conduit. There are many AT commands. A full list can be seen on the Multitech development site. A useful command is AT and V, which produces this display of all of the operating parameters of the M dot. The parameters are the device ID, to all intents, the MAC address, a unique device number fused into every device. It is immutable. Make a note of this number, it will be needed later. This is the frequency subband, important in the US and AU, but not used in the European option. Networks can be publicly visible or hidden, and command is the mode we are using at present to interrogate the M dot. Here is a full block of important settings. All of these values can be reset back to factory settings using the AT and F command, and AT and V to review. This block of network values may seem familiar, as they map back to the settings seen earlier on the conduit. In a moment, we will modify these to match for a connection. Beneath these are the values of the keys that are generated and swapped during the join process. The default join mode here is OTA, over the air, and is the more secure of the two connection options. Configuration. Opening two screens side by side allow us to ensure that the details recorded in both the device and the conduit match. Some of the commands here are optional, but are included for completeness. 
In the device, enter 80 and F to restore the device to its known default factory state. Enter 80 plus freak. This should reply with the present mode of operation and is immutable. In the AU and US options, enter AT plus FSB equals 1 to set the frequency subband. This is not necessary for the European version. Now, two important values. Enter AT plus NI equals 1, comma, and your selected name. This must match the network ID selected on the conduit. Similarly, AT plus NK equals 1, comma, your selected passphrase, which should match the, the network key passphrase on your conduit. AT plus DC equals C sets the dot to class C. Finally, AT and W to save the settings into the non-volatile memory in the microdot. Now the ACID test. Commanding the device to join the conduit network server. AT plus join to connect to the conduit. Enter. Don't be discouraged should the first join fail. Here is a response received during the production of this video. The initial join failed, followed by the system's insistence that I pause between re-application and then the successful application. Further evidence of the successful join are the existence of the network session key and the data session key. The AT command to check the join status at any time is AT plus NJS, the network join status, and there it is set to 1 to confirm that we are still connected. In a perfect world, you would not publish these key details for security reasons. We have configured and joined the end device successfully. Before moving on to transferring data, we will configure the final interface to the conduit. This again is a console screen that taps directly into the operating system of the conduit. For those who want the finer grain control of the conduit, it offers a more secure text console mode. Again, it's Windows that needs third-party support for this functionality, and PuTTY is the download of choice. Point the options at port 22 of the conduit and use the admin username and password set up previously to gain access to the powerful text prompt. The command to list nodes is LORA query minus n, and that displays this, and a typical readout of some known end devices and some metadata collected from the packet communications. Note that it's the device EUI that identifies each device uniquely along with a timestamp. Classes. The class joined is shown here. A and C are shown. LoRa allows three types of classes, A, B, and C. The reasoning behind the three operating classes is based upon the power supply available to the end device. Class C could be seen as continuous. Sufficient power is available to allow the device to be on all the time. The class C device is therefore in continuous receive mode unless it has something to transmit. Class A is on the other end of the power spectrum and accounts for some of the extreme claims for battery life on IoT devices. Seven years on a single AA battery, for example. This is only achieved by placing the device into a deep sleep for a majority of the time, during which it cannot even receive signals from the gateway. If C had not already been taken, it could be used for this type of device, C for comatose. Class A devices awake periodically or are jolted into life by a local interrupt. A transmission is then sent with no regard to any existing communication from other devices or the gateway. This again harps back to an earlier naive networking algorithm called ALOA. Class A devices can only receive for a very short period after they have transmitted, but then drop back into their deep sleep. Class B devices act like Class A devices, but have two longer periods when they can receive after their period of transmission. These are synchronized with a beacon sent out from the gateway. This additional organization increases the quantity of data that can be received before it too falls asleep. The LoRaWAN specification requires that all devices operate in Class A mode and then, using the protocol, organize a promotion to Class B or C. That class is covered sufficiently for the moment. Meanwhile, back at the secure PuTTY interface, we can have a probe around the inner workings of the conduit. If you're used to Linux, then this will be familiar. If you're not, please take care. Interesting areas of investigation include the opt change directory, so cd slash opt. Here are directories LoRa and Node Red, so change to LoRa, cd LoRa. Here is a world of rich pickings that have titles that stir the gray matter, such as packet forwarders, beacons, and gateway utilities. 
The curious can inspect the contents of these files by using, say, cat global underscore conf .json more and press the space bar until the prompt reappears. Log files can be inspected here in the slash var directory. Happy hunting. The testbed is now complete and we can pass data using node red. For interest, you may want to log in with putty and enter the command top to see what the conduit is doing. Then open a browser with HTTP your IP address colon 8080. The node red screen will appear eventually. Using node red, you can see the load node red places on the conduit. Eventually, the node red dashboard appears. It has three panes. On the left, the palette of nodes. In the middle, the design canvas. And on the right, a pane that houses two panels, info and debug. Click and drag the inject node from the palette onto the canvas. Click and drag a LoRa node from the import area onto the design canvas. Slide the slider down and drag a debug node into the canvas. Slide further down and drag a LoRa node out and a function node. Connect the nodes as shown by left-clicking on the output grey circle and dragging the orange elasticated wires to the input circles as shown. It's quite therapeutic. Double-click on this LoRa node and this Edit LoRa node screen appears. Ordinarily, you could name this node as you wish to enter and connect the details with the EUI of the device and the device EUI field and the message to be sent in the payload field. This is acceptable, but a little restrictive. These values are really default, so leave them blank as their content is going to be passed to them by the preceding nodes, so just click Cancel. Double-click the Edit Function node, and the Edit Function node window appears. This is one of the most powerful nodes in the palette. This is where JavaScript code can be directly entered. Here, we want to do nothing more than enter the EUI of the end device. Replace my values with your own and press Enter. The target EUI has now been loaded. We now want to format a message. Double click on the inject node and select string from the pull down and enter the message that wants to be sent into this blank box here. Over here on the right are two tabs, info and debug. Click on the debug as this is where the received data will be displayed. To record any changes in node red, simply press this red deploy button. The green drop down confirms the deployment is active. The blue dots also disappear from the nodes, which confirm that everything is up to date. To switch the M dot from its command mode to its data transfer mode, mouse click into the Teratome window and enter AT plus SD. The word connect appears, and anything now typed into the terminal should appear in the debug window in node red. To send from node red, just press this button. Clicking it begins the process of sending the message to the function node, and then to the LoRa node, and then out to the M dot. And the message should eventually appear here. In practice, you're unlikely to send plain text like this over IoT devices, as it's too wasteful of bandwidth. The limitation on IoT packet size means that on a poor link, you can only transmit 51 bytes per packet. There is a further transmission limit that reduces allowable transmission time to just 1%. These limitations make the demonstration of this link quite slow. Now, I'm sure that's not what you're expecting, but that's it. That's all there is to it.